Hi. How's it going? I'm Jason here at RoofSnap. I'm Katrina. It's very nice to have you. Katrina's back. Uh, <laughs> if you were on our last live webinar, uh, we had Abby. Uh, I j she joined me for her first uh, live webinar. Uh, but Katrina's back in the office, so <clears throat> we're glad to have her here. Thank you, thank you. I uh, want to apologize for anybody who did see our last video. We uh, are experimenting with sort of a uh, downward camera to show our hands while we're drawing roofs and such. Uh, and it lagged. Crazy, crazy lag. So we didn't get a successful sync up between the video stream of my hands and uh, of the uh, of the actual happenings <laughs> on the app. We'll fine tune that and uh, soon <clears throat> you'll be able to see our hands as we're drawing and sketching out in the app here as well as what's going on in the iPad screen. So it might be a, yep. a pretty beneficial thing for you to see. We'll have to test out some more apps and things to try to make that uh, happen in real time. Yep. Um, today we're going to uh, show you a couple things. First of all, we want to uh, jump over to our website. And we're still down here in the corner. Hi. <laughs> uh, RoofSnap is getting uh, a facelift. The website is getting updated. So you'll see new graphics and new imagery. Uh, Katrina, jump over to our pricing page um, yeah. when you get a second as well. So here is our uh, new pricing page. I don't know if you've uh, yeah. seen that quite yet or not. but. Got a little facelift here. Yep, our developers are going through, you know, section at a time and just uh, putting in new graphics and new imagery. Of course, you can check out our SketchOS video here, which talks about the differences between measuring the roof yourself uh, using our software or ordering a project from us using our SketchOS service, which is uploaded into your account when you're a subscriber of the software. Uh, of course, one is uh, just the subscription fee to use the software. Uh, which you can scroll down and you can see what the pricing looks like for uh, some of our different uh, plans that we have, whether it's uh, users month to month or uh, users uh, paid annually. Uh, and then if you're interested in our SketchOS product, <clears throat> you can see that we have both a half snap and a full snap. Half snap would be you know, just predominant pitch and the outline, which will give you squares for per square pricing. And the full snap will give you all the lines and pitch values uh, with labels, uh, and that will give you all of your measurements that you need for a more um, uh, detailed price analysis, you know, the cost plus methodology. Mm -hmm. And our pricing for the full snaps are based on squares. Uh, of course, anything over 80 square, or if it is commercial or multifamily, uh, you can give us a call for custom pricing on that. Um, that being said, Let's not delay, let's uh, jump right into our demo for today. <clears throat> All right, so let's hop over to the app here. There we go. So we, uh, we made the screen a little bit bigger. Uh, we will actually pop all the way back out here in our main screen. This is what you'll see once you actually, this is what you'll see when you first log in. Uh, but we have the tiles here on the screen. And as you may have read in our description for today's video, we are going to draw a roof from the Apple 3D flyover imagery. Now, this is not something that perhaps a lot of you do. You may be drawing from Google imagery. Uh, and if you have availability, you may be drawing with a near map image. Uh, and we'll briefly talk about that. But there, ha excuse me, there are some locations, uh, as Katrina has pointed out to me on, on several occasions, that have Apple flyover imagery. Um, but they don't have near map coverage and the Google imagery just isn't fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to take a look at that today. Let me go ahead and start uh, where I always like to start with the project map. When you go to the green box here, the start new project, you have to type in the address. Well, that's great if you're in the office or if you're sitting at home, but if you're in your truck in the driveway of the house that you want to draw, the best way is to go here to the project map. It's going to zoom all the way in on your geographic location using uh, your GPS on your device. I'm going to scroll all the way back out. Well, maybe not all the way. <laughs> and let's see, I'm going to zoom in on this neighborhood that's close by. And if you have watched any of our other videos, this roof may look familiar. You'll see there's a pin on it. This is the very first live webinar roof uh, that we sketched for you. Going back to the beginning here. Yep. <laughs> Which means that we do have a near map image on this house, but let's assume that it wasn't available for an address that you were um, looking to get measurements. So we're going to go ahead and press and hold on the driveway there, drop a new pin, pulling in the address for us automatically. We tap on the create button. 
And I'll give it a name, test project here. And change the office. Of course, we have multiple offices, and you might also have multiple offices. Let's say you're in three different states, and you have different tax region, uh, regions, and you use different logos for different locations or whatever. You may need multiple offices to handle multiple different scenarios. Uh, we'll put it into our RoofSnap demo office. That's where we have all of our logos and addresses and um, even our pricing is set up for uh, for like maybe a good, better, best style estimate. Yeah. If we have time, we'll throw that on the end of this, uh, this demo today. I'm going to go ahead and tap on the done button. <clears throat> we did have fields down here for billing info and insurance details. So if that information is uh, uh, available and you want to add it to the project, you can put it in. But now to get started with measurements, we want to come right here to the roof snap button and tap on that. And it's going to open up that house. Now you can see here in the upper left hand corner the new uh, near map availability button here. Uh, and just for anybody who's afraid to hit that button, trust me, you won't get charged when you tap it. Uh, it is going to show you though the available dates for that location. You can tap on OK. But if the $5 price tag isn't something that you're currently interested in, you can uh, just hit OK. You're still not uh, making any purchase, and you can hit the Cancel button. But if you do want to move forward with the purchase, uh, you can go ahead and tap on that, and you'll still have one last chance uh, just to be sure that you've zoomed in on the image. Of course, we're not, so we do want to cancel back out and go back to the point of this webinar today, which is the Apple 3D image mm -hmm. imagery. Change Map button here at the bottom. When you tap on that, you'll see that we're, uh, uh, we have access to Google imagery. Google Hybrid, it's the same imagery, it just adds in our street names. Um, the Apple Flyover, which is what we're going to look at today. The Apple Satellite, which, well, when you get one, you get both. We don't recommend the Apple Satellite imagery uh, in most cases because of its low resolution. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, NearMap. This version of NearMap uh, allows users with subscriptions to log in, so it's a little bit different than actually purchasing it at the address level. Let's go ahead and change it to Apple Flyover. I'm going to tap on OK, but let's read this first. So, Flyover view may cause line measurements to be off by up to 1%, and square measurements to be off by up to 2%. Now, there's a reason for this, and we'll talk about it. Uh, but that being said, I found personally from my drawings that Apple, when compared with the drawing from NearMap, is within about 1%. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see if that's true today here on this measurement. We'll compare what we get with the Apple uh, imagery and a NearMap drawing of the same house. Uh, so don't be afraid to draw a roof with Apple, especially when it looks this much better than the Google imagery. Yeah, profoundly better. Yeah, absolutely. There's not that uh, angle that the Google imagery had. Uh, it's nice and clear here. Yep, it's a real straight down image. And um, one of the things we want to point out here is, is I can't actually zoom in as far, which means the pixel density of this image isn't quite as high as the Google image. But, but that was more of a satellite image that, for me, felt like it had been magnified. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that the pixel density was better. It's just that Google natively allowed me to zoom in further. Now, here in RoofSnap, in this view, I can't zoom in beyond this point. But once I've snapped the image, I can zoom in much further, as many of you may know if you've already drawn roofs in RoofSnap. So the goal here, as you see, I have two fingers on the screen. These little hands represent the points where my fingers are touching the screen. I want to get this image straight. Uh, square in the screen and I do that by aligning the ridges on both my vertical and hor horizontal lines and it doesn't have to be perfect but of course the straighter it is the straighter the lines of my drawing can become I feel pretty good about that does that okay. seem alright? I do too, I think you should snap it alright let's snap and start drawing which is this button here in the upper right hand corner snapping alert of course we want to make sure we are zoomed in as far as possible and we have uh, zoomed in as far as possible so we can go ahead and click OK. This is going to lock that aerial image in for us so we can get to our drawing screen here. Yep. Once the image is loaded here into the drawing screen or into the uh, sort of the, the, the screen where we can label lines and draw outlines and all that, it starts us off in the pan and zoom function. 
So at this point, we can zoom way in. Now, you're going to begin to see what, are, what, what I refer to as visual artifacts. Uh, unclear outside edges. The corners are kind of rounded. Uh, and here's why. So I'm actually going to open up this is exact same image, but in a 3D environment by tapping on this little button down here in the bottom right-hand corner. So there's the house again, Apple flyover. But in this view, I can change my camera angle from being either straight down overhead or from an angle. And I can circle around and sort of zoom and, and pan and rotate around this house. Now, again, in this view, I can't zoom in 100% or, well, I guess I can't zoom in beyond 100% um, and maintain the ability to rotate it. But let's take a look at this step wall here and this side of the house and use the magnification button that we have built in here in the upper left-hand corner. So let's zoom way in. Now I want you to see the, you know, the drippy edges, the artifacts of the trees. They're almost polygonal shaped. Mm -hmm. uh, this is because Apple has processed this imagery using photogrammetry and created this 3D environment. And this is the issue. This is why there, there is the possibility of losing some accuracy because we don't have the super sharp edges that we'll see uh, in near map as the, of course, the, the prime example. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's back all the way out. I feel like I have uh, <clears throat> done my due diligence with the description as to you know why uh, the imagery is the way that it is. But let's go ahead and draw out some lines. So I'm going to start, <clears throat> excuse me, here with the ridge on the garage, and come over, and I can see where those valleys hit. And I'm going to come down the valley using my cursor tails. I'm going to make my best judgment as to where those eaves start and that valley ends. I'm going to say it's right about there. I'm going to come straight over my eave, line up my cursor tail with my ridge, and then draw the rake. And I went a little bit too far, so we'll come back just a hair. Now we tap again to start the next line to come up, and that cursor, that cursor tail shows me when I'm straight all the way across. Oh, I don't want to go that far. I think the valley is, let's see, we draw it right to there and then come up the valley jump back down to where that bottom of that valley is and come up the rake to the ridge keeping that line straight and I don't think it's perfectly straight but we might adjust it here a little bit once we get all the lines in. I'm gonna bring that up just a bit and come down the eave edge come up that rake to the ridge cross over the ridge now let's do the last rake on that upper section, that second story section. I've come across the lower ridge here. There we go. So to the left, it looks like our rake line is going to be pretty straight. You know, it's going into that tree, but again, our cursor tails kind of help us line that up. All the way into the gutter, cursor tails look good there. Before I draw the last section, let's zoom in and straighten up a few things. So this ridge, I mm, feel like the whole thing needs to come over a bit. And to straighten that up, Jason's just hovering his cursor over the points he's already laid down uh, for about a second. And yeah. he's able to pick that up and uh, straighten that out for us. We have one video that we've put out, which I think we'll link, link to at the end of this video. It's called Detailed Measurements, and, mm -hmm. and we go you know, slow motion through drawing out the roof. Uh, so if you want to see every uh, step uh, described as we draw a line, definitely check out our video called Detailed Measurements. Is it Detailed Measurements? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's right. The detail's in the name, so I yeah. feel like we got we I feel got like we it covered right. it, right? <laughs> so, you know, because this imagery from Apple has some rounded edges, you know, isn't uh, the squarest imagery, uh, you know what, maybe that, you know, pulled in a little bit. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but those cursor tails are where it really comes in handy uh, because we can straighten those lines even though it looks like that rake edge kind of dives in. Uh, I believe that that's more a result of the photogrammetry. Mm -hmm. We can rely then on our cursor tails and 
end lines like ridges and things like that. <clears throat> So the last part that we haven't done is the first story section here on the rear. So when we come down the rake, you know, it really looks like it curves in diagonally. Uh, but I would venture to say that we would be more accurate if we stay true with a squared line, uh, a line that is 90 degrees from the ridge, which we can do that by following the cursor tails, and then tap and draw our eave edge in. And, uh, you know, typically there's a little bit of an overhang. Now we see some distortion in here. It almost looks like the step wall is uh, closer to us than the rake. Um, but my inclination, based on all the roofs that I've drawn, is to go about eight inches past and then draw the step wall as an underhang up. Now, it, it wants to snap to that point, so I'm actually just going to draw it out a little bit and then connect it. But then come back, as Katrina had mentioned, and just put my cursor on that point for about a second. And then I can slide it in and make the step wall really close to my rake line. But granted, you know, the step wall is many, many feet below those rake lines. <clears throat> so there we have all of the facets drawn. Now let's check and see if we've drawn it correctly. We want to see uh, highlighted sh shaded blue uh, areas for all of these different facets, and we can see those by tapping here on the facets button. And this is exactly what we want to see. Currently we're showing 0, 12 pitches on all the slopes, but everything is shaded in blue. Nice. Let's label up those lines before we begin to address pitch values. Yep. Sounds good. <clears throat> the edges button here on the toolbar at the bottom is uh, what's going to pull out this drawer. And for anybody who ever wondered, uh, that's what they call it. It's a drawer. It's a drawer, and the drawer can be slid in and out by tapping either right on this arrow button here, and you see it changes direction as the drawer moves left and right. Mm. But you don't have to tap right there on the arrow. You can actually tap anywhere in the gray space, and it makes the drawer go in and out. I learned something new this week. That's phenomenal. Yeah, right? <laughs> <clears throat> when we tap on eaves, you'll see that it changes our little uh, icon here to a red label, so we know we've got the eaves. Uh, but if we tap on eaves a second time, we can add ice and water shield. And there's the IW for ice and water shield and eave edge. And there's the E slash E for eave edge. Eave edge is our line measurement for um, edge metal, uh, drip edge metal or gutter apron or whatever your, your, your metal of choice that you've set up in your office would be. So once we've got the sub labels that we want loaded in, we can begin to tap. <clears throat> My throat is so scratchy today, Katrina. <laughs> You we tap can tap on all those lines to yeah. label them eaves. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also assigning that ice and water shield and the eave edge to each line that we've tapped because we've previously selected them. Is that a cup of water down there? Can, uh, I, uh, yeah. can I have a swig? Yeah. All right. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's so much better. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and uh, switch to rakes and tap on rakes that second time. Now... I never installed ice and water shield at the rakes. Um, I believe that there are some companies who might. Uh, for our purposes today, let's just label up the rakes with the rake edge sublabel. Tap on all the rakes. Then we're going to go back to ridges. And let's put ridge vent on all three ridges. And hit the back button again and go to valleys. Tap on valleys a second time and add ice and water shield to the valleys. Finally, I'm going to zoom in, pan and zoom mode there. Uh, when those lines are so close together, it's really hard to set the labels. So we're going to go step, tap on step a second time, grab the step flashing and the ice and water shield. Let's make this uh, fake project uh, leak proof. Water tape, <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Put step flashing and ice and water shield at the step walls. Guarantee you if the roof leaks, it's not coming in at the step wall. <laughs> uh, as long as it's installed correctly, of course, right? That's all up for debate. Right. <laughs> pan, back to the pan and zoom button here. Uh, let's bring it back down to uh, be able to see the whole, the whole roof in the screen. Slide it over here to the left a little bit so that the drawer that's going to pop out here when I tap on facets uh, doesn't cover up any of the slopes. And, uh, well, here's where we're going to be able to put in pitch. I actually think I know what the pitches are on this roof. I'm going to make some wild guesses. Eight's there. Uh, Three on the back, uh, six on the front. That's what I remember from when we drew it, what, yeah. weeks ago, right? Yeah. So uh, let's see. Good memory. Well, I don't know. <laughs> so now let's go in and use our pitch tools and see if I'm even close. So 
Let's start with the little man with the circle around his feet. This is the Google Street View icon. We tap on that, it's gonna open us up on Street View. And this indeed is the house right in front of us. We can see the van and the shadow and the camera. Oh yeah, nice. <clears throat> and you know, funny enough, that gable is almost dead center where we're located in the screen. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna keep it off to the right side a little bit. If I move it over here, I'm gonna to begin to distort it. See how it gets distorted, especially in the corners. We don't wanna do that. Let's just keep it over here on the left. Now in the upper left-hand corner is our pitch card. Let's open up this pitch tool and zoom in on that. And let's see, four, too shallow, five, too shallow, six, whew, that's really close, seven, no, that's looking a bit steep, so I'm gonna call that a six. Yep. Gonna go ahead and hit the minus button to close out the pitch card and then the X button to leave that screen. And the other little icon next to the man with a circle around his feet is sort of a little map icon. And we've tapped it already before uh, where we can go in and view the house in a 3D environment. So really the two that we're looking for is, uh, the, the two slopes would be these two left and right of the cursor and then these two. So let's start up here. Sometimes you know, we'll put the cursor right on the gable where we can still see the wall. But just so you know, it also works. Whoa, two, two fingers. Two fingers on the screen mm -hmm. to bring us down a little bit. It also works if you are looking at the end of a gable across the roof line. We just want to leave the cursor a little bit high so that it's not visibly in our way. And I'm not 100% here, but of course the goal was to make the vertical line of our crosshairs uh, right perpendicular, yeah, right in line with that ridge. I'm close enough for our demo purposes, but if you want to be real meticulous, minus out, straighten it back up a little bit more. But then go ahead and hit this uh, icon here to open up. Uh, this is the pitch card that changes based on the view uh, that we are, uh, uh, well, based on the angle of view for this image. And uh, what did we say? Did we think that that was a six? <clears throat> nope. Nope, I thought, I thought it was, it was an, an eight. eight. Well, from this angle, I'm not so sure about the eight. I might want to check that from the other side. Let's back out of that view. While we're here on this side, we'll do our, our diligence here, putting our cursor tails very close to where the rakes meet the ridge. Zoom in on that. And then press on, or tap on continue. Well, if that's not a seven, <laughs> I don't think it's an eight. An eight feels too steep. Yeah. Oh, I think I must have been wrong the whole time. It's a seven. So we have sevens and sixes? Sevens and sixes. Okay. All right. Well, and that's definitely lower than a four. Yeah. It could be a three. It could be maybe even a two and a half or something like that. Yeah. But we'll call it three just because it's just below our minimum pitch value here. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, let's come all the way back around and see if we can't get a good look. We have two spots to measure here. The step wall, we can measure that, and the rake edge. Get nice and straight. Zoom in on that. Actually, can we lower ourselves in the screen? Yeah, see, yeah. we can get a little bit lower in the screen before we magnify and make sure we're nice and straight. That looks pretty straight to me. Yeah. Go ahead good. and open up the pitch card. Definitely more than a six, seven. Nope, eight's too much. That's a seven. All right, well, I misremembered wow, entirely. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so we come all the way back out. Now we go to facets. So I got the three, I got the sixes. Those are not eights, those are sevens. So we'll go back to pitch, grab the sevens here, and then tap right on the facets. 
to change those eights to sevens. You see when I tap it once, it toggles it to zero, but if I tap it a second time, it brings in the pitch value that I have selected. Well, <clears throat> we don't have any dormers, and we don't have any verified second layer. Uh, we could call the second story area second story um, for the purposes of, of insurance, if there was some insurance money to be had on two story. Um, low slope, so we could label this rear section low slope, but only if membrane or coating or some other non-shingle, non-asphalt shingle product was being installed. Low slope's going to separate out any area that it's applied to, uh, basically telling the app shingles aren't going here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't want to label it low slope unless indeed we're using a low slope application um, like an EPDM, a TPO, or maybe a modified bitumen rolled roofing or something like that. Uh, sometimes I use these acronyms with Katrina and I'm not quite sure if she knows what I'm talking. I think she does. I'm pretty sure she does. I know the acronym. Good. Yeah. Good, good. EPDM is rubber, right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Good. I mean, she, she knows. Trust me. <laughs> she knows. She explains this stuff better than I do. I'm just the chatty one. Um, I think we've got the measurements that we need. Let's just drop a couple pins on the roof, our final tool here at the bottom. Uh, let's keep it simple. If, I, if I'm seeing this right, that looks like probably a soil pipe, maybe another one there, maybe another one there. Of course, you'd want to verify all this on site. And I think there's a chimney off to the back here. It's either a chimney or it's an AC unit on the ground, uh, one of the two. Uh, plumbing boots, let's grab the one to three inch, typical for residential, and drop those pins. Chimney flashing, let's grab the small chimney flashing kit and put it here. And let's show you the functionality. So if you need to take a photo of any area on the roof that can be identified with a pin. You can press and hold on any of the pins and take a photo with your device. So there's some remotes and a roofing magazine. <laughs> we'll take a picture of that and pin it right to the roof. Um, and let's add some notes to that pin as well. Edit the notes and let's say here <clears throat> is the chimney. I'm very dramatic in my notes. <laughs> uh, there's no save button here. You could just minimize the keyboard and tap anywhere off that uh, little text field and it'll go away, but it will save those notes that we just created. Any of the other pins that you put on the roof can have images and notes added to them in exactly the same way. So I think we're good. Let's go ahead and tap on the done button. <clears throat> Sounds good. It's going to pop up our waste calculator here for us. Yep, 6.39. So that's the waste that's being recommended by the app based on these uh, calculations. Uh, so if you find them to be accurate for your purposes, hit yes. If you find that you want to put in your own waste factor, hit no. So today we'll hit yes because um, I want to compare them to the near map that we have for the other project. Uh, and we'll come to measurements. Just so you know, though, once you come to the measurements, you can change that waste percentage to be 10%, 15%, 20%, wh whatever you find to be accurate for your methodologies, uh, feel free to change the waste percentage there. Um, then we can review any of the measurements or any of the category measurements in this screen. But in order to get these measurements in a form that you're very familiar with, uh, if you've ever ordered measurements from a measurement company like a, a measurement report provider, uh, of course, you can't make any changes to those measurements. You can't modify them if, uh, if something was wrong, uh, at least not personally. Uh, and, and that's our goal. Our goal is to give you ownership of your own measurement process uh, so that you are verifying the accuracy, uh, being able to check measurements on site, make adjustments as needed, verify pitch values, mm -hmm. putting all of those tools right in, uh, right in your hands. So let me go ahead and tap on the Generate New button right underneath our sketch report. That's our PDF document that's gonna break down all of these measurements in a way that can be emailed uh, and shared to yourself uh, or to any of your colleagues or insurance adjusters or what have you. When I tap on the sketch report, it opens it up and here we have a uh, nice handsome document. The logo that you um, Upload into your account will appear at the top, and your company address and your salesman's contact info will all be on this document with the primary image used to draw the roof. 
along with some directional images that we didn't look at today, but check out uh, some of our other uh, videos, specifically the detailed measurements, uh, and, we'll, and we'll dive into those Bing images a little bit more. Uh, and then a pitch breakdown, so sixes and sevens and three on the back with the two-story uh, two on that two-story section. And then a breakdown of all the line labels and individual line measurements. And finally, totals for all of the categories. Total squares, actual squares, our two-story section, pitch breakdowns, all of our line measurements, and all of our category measurements. But as we keep going, we'll see a breakdown of squares by uh, surface area per facet. And then pins and their locations for all the accessories that we put on the roof followed by notes and photos that have been attached to the various pins. You could have pages and pages of photos in here. Use it as a very thorough inspection report uh, if you want to. And this document, by tapping on the share button in the upper right-hand corner, can be emailed or saved to your company Dropbox or any other cloud storage for that matter. Let's tap on the Done button. Now, We've spent about 30 minutes going through, uh, you know, talking about the website a little bit, talking about uh, measuring with Apple, um, discussing that imagery and why it uh, may not be quite as accurate as, say, near map, but arguably as accurate, if not more accurate, than uh, your Google image, depending on your location. Mm -hmm. That's why we connect to so many different imagery sources, because not every location has the same quality, the only imagery provider that has the same consistency area after area uh, would be near map. Mm -hmm. So I want to jump back out, all the way back out to my new leads. And webinar number one, 3690 Montclair Drive here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we better double check and make sure the pitch values are the same That's right. on both projects if we're going to be comparing squares. So this we go to one. facets, and you know what? I did label those as eights, mm -hmm. and I think they're sevens. Or I went back and changed them to, no, I know what happened. When I'm discussing <clears throat> the ability to go in and change pitches, I'm always like, let's say those are eights. Yeah, okay. Go to pitch, yep. let's make it an eight, let's tap on them and change them to eight. I do that every <laughs> time. So my apologies for any of you who were doubting my first video. Uh, chances are I had every intention to leave them as sevens, uh, if I'm guessing right. But I really have no idea. I'm just trying to cover my ass. Oh, wait, I can't say that on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, that's funny. <clears throat> so let's leave it at sevens so that we compare apples to apples, right? Uh, yep. And uh, let's compare apples to near map. <laughs> apples to near map. Awesome. So the waste percentage uh, at 6.44%. Uh, can't remember what it was on the other one. I feel like it was really close to the 6.4 something. Yeah, it was pretty close. So we'll go ahead and tap on yes. Uh, and here's our goal. So let's go to measurements on the near map. So we're at 23.81. Uh, and let's just talk about actual squares. And uh, we'll pull up a calculator as well. So 23.81. And now let's go over to the test project from Apple. And let's go to the measurements. Uh, and we're at 24.59, so this is, this is actually, uh, for a, from a roofing perspective, you better be over than short. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's see what margin of error this is as a percentage. So we take the near map measurement, which is a little bit tighter, uh, and we divide that by the 24.59. And we were uh, less than, let's see. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Katrina, why don't we go full screen for a second? So we're less than 1% off of near map, uh, which I feel pretty good about that. So 0.96, um, that's, you know, that's doable. That's, that's a margin of error that I would feel comfortable with. Uh, you know, with the Apple imagery, maybe puts me about a square high. Um, and, and I think knowing that I can still get in the ballpark uh, from Apple imagery. Uh, that being said, uh, and we've jumped back over here into the full screen again, whenever possible, uh, my preference would be to uh, try to purchase that near map image simply because, as you can see here, the, the lines are so much clearer. The tree, even though it's not covering the roof for this house, but the tree here on the right, 
uh, the leaves are off the trees because yeah. we were able to pick a early spring image. Mm -hmm. So I feel pretty good about that. Uh, that being said, we can hop back out of the former project, jump over to the test project, and in the last 10 minutes here, why don't we put together a quick estimate and show yeah. them the estimate document. Let's do it. Estimates occur uh, and are organized and, and, and formulated all here within the specifications tab. Now the good news is the steep charges are added automatically when we have them set up in our account, which uh, we'll show you how to do or show you in a video how to do uh, or live chat with you and, uh, and help you set up your account. Uh, the two-story charges, uh, they're in here as well. And uh, in fact, if we go ahead and add in some templates, uh, those templates live down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And we'll probably show you in another video at a later time um, how these templates are made. In fact, Katrina, we do have a, we do have a video where we've... Uh, do we have a live chat coming through? No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to entice people oh. to tell them to chat with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to send out a chat. So if you guys are watching right now, if you have any questions, uh, Katrina's going to send a little message through the chat. Uh, so feel free to ask us any questions that you might have and interact with us through the chat. Um, but to answer your previous question, Jason, before I uh, oh, did you disrupted hear? your, no, your no, no, concentration no. here, yes, we did uh, We did have a uh, previous webinar that we showed how to create templates. Yes. And so some of the templates that we've created just for demonstration purposes are here. We've created some best, some better, some designer. <clears throat> Let's do the better best designer. That's mm -hmm. my favorite one. Sounds good. Um, and we'll go with uh, something that we have designers. So Certainty has the presidential shake. GF has the slate line. Owens Corning has the Berkshire. Uh, let's do the Certainty. Unless you have a preference. I don't have a preference. I'm completely unbiased. All right. So <laughs> for for neighborhoods where this makes sense, let's do better Certainty landmark. And it's going to load in that template. And it's going to ask us for a color. We're going to tap on a color. And then we're going to go back to the folder. And we're going to go to um, Certainty, let's see, uh, Landmark IR, I guess, for the best, which may end up being more expensive than the designer. I'm not sure. It all depends on bundles per square. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll change to that one. And uh, now we're seeing um, to select color again. Uh, so let's go with the Burt Sienna. Uh, and then we'll add one more. Let's go to the designer and add the presidential shake. Oh, and that one's a bit more. So see, that's a good increase in price based on the quality of the product. Um, tap on the designer. And again, it's going to make us pick a color. This is great. So your salesman can't come in without a color selection. I don't know if that's ever happened to any of you business owners uh, or any of you uh, production managers, uh, but it's definitely uh, important to have a, uh, a shingle color when the contract's turned in. Absolutely. Uh, so we wanted to make that pretty difficult to, uh, to keep from happening. Now, let's say the uh, presidential shake is the one to buy for this customer and you've negotiated a final price, but you need to adjust this price uh, accordingly. We can tap on the I button. The custom line item is gonna allow us to do discounts and markups and, uh, and other custom priced items that aren't in the software. But you can also go in and add additional material or select uh, a different shingle. Of course, you'd probably wanna delete one of those items before you add in a new one. So for example, if you were gonna be changing the shingle, you could go to the presidential shingle, delete it out, uh, and then add in a different shingle if you needed to customize one template or another. Tapping on that I button again right here, we'll go down to the add custom line item. And let's say we've negotiated a flat 18 grand. Uh, so that's not, you know, a discount as a percentage, that's gonna be hard to calculate. Uh, of course, the markup, maybe that's for like O&P or uh, close proximity or, uh, difficult haul or some other item <clears throat> that you might need to add based on job difficulty. But a description of a regular light item here, let's set that as discount. And then the price, which can be a positive, uh, but it can also be a negative. So we're going to do negative 
$437.72. That is extremely specific. Well, now it will be 18 grand flat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see where these numbers are <clears throat> You see where from. this is going? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I hit on the save button. Whoa. Let's do a quick refresh. Go back into the specifications. I somehow <laughs> added 4.7. I don't know. I somehow added 4.7 units. So let's turn off that capture data from RoofSnap for a second and go ahead. We want that to be one unit. I, uh, I must have hit 4.7 somehow. That's crazy. All right, well, this is good. We get to learn more things as, uh, as we make changes. There we go. So I changed right. the discount uh, to one unit, um, and now we have that straight up 18,000. That's where we want to be. Yep. Great. Uh, so let's jump back out of the specifications. Go down to documents, and we're going to tap on generate new under our estimates. Here you go, Katrina. It's I all yours. Want, I want to touch the iPad now. <laughs> Hand it over. All right. I'm going to sit back and relax <laughs> a little bit. So, uh, so I'm going to open up this uh, estimate PDF here, and we're going to look at our good, better, best. So it's got our, I'm sorry, our better, best designer. Yep. Um, so it's got our shingle uh, selection there with the color options up on the top. Um, it's got our totals here for each. And then the list of all of our items that we have here uh, in the estimate. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, you'll see our discount uh, down here on other. Um, now, line item quantities and line item pricing, mm -hmm. it may not be every contractor that wants to show um, that much detail in their estimate. So just so that you all know, uh, that stuff can be turned off. You don't have to show line item quantities uh, or line item pricing uh, within this document or within any document uh, that, that, can be, that can be turned off. And that being said, uh, items can also be turned off on documents as well. So yeah. if you don't want to show certain items, such as maybe your plastic half nails, yeah. uh, you can have those in your specifications screen, but turn them off on the estimate. You don't have to show your customer uh, what nails you're going to use. Absolutely. Uh, show them how to uh, the, the share button again. It's the yeah. same for every document. You'll see some consistencies here. So just tap on that share button when you're in a document. Uh, and you can email it or uh, save it to Dropbox or any, any sort of cloud storage. Uh, and then, well, in the last three minutes here, why don't we sign a contract real quick? Great. So as you may or may not remember from three minutes ago, uh, we left the presidential, uh, presidential shake uh, template highlighted. And whichever template is highlighted, that's the one that's going to show up when we do a contract signing. So highlight that one if that's the one the customer's going with, and then go to Documents and tap on the Capture Signature. Now, this is uh, a version of the document that can be signed, but it's not the final document. Scroll down. You can uh, allow the homeowner to review the terms and then sign right in this uh, signature window here. And when you tap on Save, now it's going to embed that signature into the PDF, mm -hmm. uh, which again, this is still not the PDF. We're going to tap on documents there and go back out. And now the contract.pdf uh, is available for us to review and then email and send. And make sure that that document uh, you know, is, uh, is uh, exactly how you want it to be uh, you know, before you leave the house of the homeowner. You'll see that their embedded signature is down at the bottom with a, uh, a date stamp and then in all the terms and conditions of the agreement, which again is all customizable. It's even customizable to the extent that everything below that price line, the bold uh, fonts, the bars, the boxes, all that is customized using styling uh, with HTML. And most of our customers, Katrina and, and myself included, aren't spectacular in HTML. Maybe they've never used it, or maybe they do know it. Um, uh, you have the ability to customize your own. But if you uh, are not comfortable with your own styling, send us a PDF, uh, something we can copy and paste uh, of, your, of your existing contract. Email it to support at roofsnap.com. 
and uh, and I think Katrina would be happy uh, if she's she's feeling nice uh, to, to upload that into your account with some styling to give it uh, a similar feel to your existing contract. Now, certainly our documents have their own ultimate layout, uh, but we can replicate some of your styling. And last but not least, the descriptions for each of these items. While we have many of these items already in our database, you can create your own custom items, but you can also modify the language. So if your marketing language within an estimate is very specific, mm -hmm. if you don't want to say remove and dispose architectural shingle, you don't have to. You can delete those words and change them out for your own words. I think that looks pretty good. We, uh, we got through the signed contract. Um, we, could, we, could, we could go on, but we've been 45 minutes in, so I think yeah. uh, this is probably a pretty good spot. Yeah. Click us back over to full screen, Katrina. Hi. How you guys doing? <laughs> uh, so I've had fun tonight. Um, I always like showing the operations here, uh, the functionality of the app. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That's all I got. I'm done. I'm spent. <laughs> That's how you uh, measure a roof using Apple Flyover. Yep. It's and as we, yeah. Sources. yeah. And as we promised, uh, we're going to provide you uh, a link to our detailed uh, webinar, or excuse me, our detailed measurements webinar. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. Put that right here. Uh, and then please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll put that right over there. Uh, and then go to our website uh, and sign up for our 14-day trial. We'll put that right there. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks so much. See ya. It's great to have you.